Filter effects can be applied to movie clip and sprite symbol instances to perform blurs, glows, drop shadows, and other commonly used effects. This lesson demonstrates the use of these filter effects. So here I'm starting out with a blank stage, and in my library I have this little flame movie clip. So what I'll do is actually pull out a number of these flame instances upon my stage, and then make some adjustments to them so that they look different. So we can change the width and the height of these objects and so forth to make something that appears like an actual fire. And there we are. So that looks pretty good. So if I want to actually apply some filters to this, I can use my selection tool and select the object, go into my properties panel, I can collapse all these other things, but leave this filters bit open here. And way down at the bottom, I can choose to add a filter. So let's actually add a little bit of blur to this. And you can see that by default, it gives just enough blur to be visible here. You can choose the quality of the blur, so low, medium, or high. I normally choose medium for any of my effects, but depending upon what you're looking for and your target audience, the power of their CPUs on their computers and everything, you might want to stick with low. So eight looks pretty good. You can blur along X and Y, and you can actually link those. So we can also add multiple effects here. So let's also add a glow. And this glow I'm going to choose to be, well, maybe not that yellow. Let's go into our color picker and choose something a little brighter. So I'm going to expand the blur of my glow quite a bit. I'm going to choose medium once again. And you can also choose the strength of the glow. So you can see how that sort of works. I'm going to take it down a little bit to 85%. And you can use these options here. Knockout is going to make the original movie clip actually disappear. And then inner glow is, of course, going to apply the glow to the inside instead of the outside of the object. But that looks pretty good right there. Another thing I could do is add some drop shadow. So let's add drop shadow to this. And with my drop shadow, I can choose again, blur X and Y. I can choose strength, quality. I can choose the specific angle. So you can see how this works here. And the distance. So I'm going to shoot this up a bit and over. And you can also knock out the object once again. You can have an inner shadow, simply hide the object, and change the color of the drop shadow. So maybe I'll make the color actually something like that. All right, so now I've got a blur, a glow, and a drop shadow on this particular element here. So what about all of these others? Maybe I don't want to go through that on each particular piece. Well, I can select the one that I just applied all this stuff to. And you can see here that we can choose to add it to the clipboard. So I can basically copy them all or copy selected effects. And then when I go on to any of these other elements, I can choose to paste. So you can see what happens here is that it actually pastes them on all the elements. If I choose any of these, I'm going to have the same exact options. So some other things to know about these filters. We can copy selected once again, copy all and paste. We can also go in and enable or disable certain filters. So we can choose drop shadow and disable it. And then it gets this little kind of X next to it. If we want to re-enable it, we just hit the I again. We can also go in and reset a filter to its default or delete a filter. And here we have presets. So we can actually save this as a preset. So let's save this as 
flame effect. So now, even if I pull out another of these instances, I can go in here and actually go to my presets and look at that. There's my flame effect preset. So I can just click that and there we go. And those will persist across sessions too. So it's really useful to be able to create effects like that that you can just apply to anything you're working on. So this has been an example of how to use filters on movie clip symbols in Flash Professional CS6.